Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a chocolate Labrador in pastels. So this tutorial is going to focus mainly on how to draw brown fur, but before I can look at any part of that for this subject, I do like to get the eye drawn in first. Now at many times here you're going to see my colour wheel and I'm using separate bits of paper to test my colours. Now the reason being, this tutorial is available on my Patreon channel all in real time, so there are no sections sped up or cut out, and I'm really explaining how to select the colours based on the reference photo. This is one of the more common questions that I'm asked and how to layer pastels and which pencils to use, so this tutorial focuses on that really heavily. I want to make sure that I've covered as much as I can in the real time tutorial, which is why I recorded it with a voiceover while I'm drawing, so every single process is explained at the time. Now when it comes to the base layers of the fur, I want to make sure that I've got a really nice soft transition from my lights to darks. If you have a look here, although I'm now working with my pastel pencils, the very first pan pastel base layer is nice and smooth. The aim of that first layer is not to fill the tooth of the paper and get a really thick layer of pastel, the aim is just to hint at your lights and your darks. A big tip when you are using pan pastels for your base layer is you should be able to still see your sketch or transfer lines through that first layer. If you apply too much pan pastel and it hides those white transfer lines then that's an indication that you've used too much pastel pigment and then you'll potentially not be able to put in as many layers on top. Now that of course in the long run is going to limit how much realism and depth we can achieve in our portrait because we're going to be very limited with how many um, different pencil layers we can put on top. Now as I'm continuing to layer here, you'll notice that I'm using a couple of purple pencils for some of my highlights. Now the reference photo that you're working from when drawing brown fur is going to tell you whether or not your colours need to be on the warmer end of the colour wheel or on the cooler end of the colour wheel. Now in some situations, the portrait here, and you're going to see this as this develops, I'm going to be using a combination of warm and cool colours. There are a few purples in here, but mainly this is a lot more of my redder and burnt sienna colours. So the colour selection, the browns that I'm using are mainly, do I need a dark or lighter version of that brown? And is it on the warmer or cooler end of the colour wheel? Now obviously all of this is far easier to visualise in the real time version. So if that is of interest, I will link my Patreon in the description below. So now that I'm completing more of the face, you can start to see how the pan pastels are really useful for hinting at the main lights and darks fairly quickly. I like to mix my pan pastels very similarly to how I do paint. So I actually use a, another, like a separate palette, I just use a normal bit of white print paper, and I mix my colours on that paper so that I can make sure, as best as I can, that the colours I've used are mixed together on my sponge applicator. Again, if you're unsure on the colour that you've mixed, you can always use a separate piece of scrap paper. I do recommend using the colour that you're drawing on, so in this situation I'm using the dark grey, and then you can test those colours before you apply it to your paper. But do remember that any subject, no matter what it is, the, the colour of the fur that's sitting on the very top, those final details, that's not the colour that I want to be putting in now. I want to be layering the colour of the fur that's closest to the skin because I want to be building up from there. The details that are sitting on the very top are going to be a different colour because they're catching a different sort of light. So those details, that coloration needs to be left for our pastel pencils. So now I'm working with building up more of my fur texture, you can really start to see the pencil technique. Now I have a tutorial here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. Now one of the things I talk about there with pencil technique is fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. And now that I've got more of this face drawn in, you can really see how those three things are so important. The fur direction is not random, it follows the underlying bone and muscular structure. So you can see here, look at how the fur starts to curve over the top of the eye socket. If I get that curve incorrect and in the wrong place, I'm gonna change the structure of the face. 
So this here is something that I really do focus on heavily. Now the other elements in terms of fur length and fur thickness are gonna depend on how long that pencil is in contact with the paper and how much pressure you're applying to that pencil. There are many tutorials that I have on Patreon where I'm showing the use of a putty eraser to show how much pressure should be applied to that pencil at the specific layer that we're working on. Because too much pressure can massively affect the texture that we're trying to create in our portrait. And one of the questions that I'm asked more frequently is how do I get my details looking so fine when drawing fur? And that does require the pencil technique, the amount of pressure that's applied. So this is something I really do cover thoroughly in my real time tutorials on Patreon. And in terms of the fur length, if you look at this ear, the fur details at the top section of the ear and the ones at the bottom, there is a significant difference in the length of those pencil strokes. If I'd have carried on using longer pencil strokes on the lower part of that ear, then I'm gonna make the ear look overly fluffy. Now, of course, for some breeds, that's perfectly fine and that's what we want. But when drawing Labradors, the ear length on the, the fur at the tip of the ear is significantly shorter. So I do want to make sure that I've replicated that in my pencil strokes. And this process here is exactly the same on the other side. Now, because of the way that this dog has her head turned, the ear on the right hand side that I've just done last actually has more of a shorter fur texture appearance than the other ear. That's just because we don't have as much of that larger surface area visible because of the slight tilt of her head. So all of these things come into play when we are drawing fur. It really does depend on that reference photo. Now onto the nose. I had a question on Patreon and it was, why do I um, approach a portrait in a specific way when I'm working with smaller sections? And it's a great question and there's no right or wrong answer for this. But for me, once I've drawn the eyes in and I've got part of the fur around that eye, I will then naturally work on the ears and then the nose. Once I've worked on the nose, I like to then map in the fur around it and then work on the bridge of the nose. I just find now that if I left this at this current stage and put my pencils down for the day, that I would be able to go straight back to it the following day because it already looks like this dog. I'm not leaving it at a stage like here, for instance, where I'm mapping in my base layers. If I'd have stopped at this point, it's not at that motivated stage. It's a little bit discouraging. So I always like to make sure that I've got an area of that portrait looking like the reference photo before I move on to the next part. So I speak about the importance of layers in every single one of my YouTube tutorials. It's really important that alongside the contrast, so you want your darks nice and dark and your highlights nice and bright, those two things I really do focus on because I feel that that gets more of the depth and realism in the fur. And this area of the muzzle is a prime example. I've got so many layers here where I'm building up my highlights gradually. I haven't jumped into my brightest details early on. And this is why Pastel Matte by Claire Fontaine is my favourite paper for pastels. I haven't yet found a paper that allows for the same number of layers. I've never got to the point yet with a portrait where I filled the tooth of the paper, so I could always go back in and add more details if I needed to. Now this area between the eyes here, the bridge of the nose, this is a very important area where the fur direction really needs to be studied closely. If we make our pencil strokes too curved, we're gonna make the face look really narrow. If we make them too flat and more horizontal, we can then make the face look really wide. So here, I really wanna make sure that I'm mapping in the main fur direction, and then I can focus on my layers after that. So the tutorials that I have on my Patreon really do focus on the pet portrait side of things as well as wildlife subjects. So I've got a nice variety of both. One month I'll upload a domestic pet, so a dog, cat or a horse, and the following month I'll upload a wildlife subject. Now I really do like to have that option for Patreon members to possibly take on commissions of their own. So I do try and have an example of each breed, that's what I'm aiming towards, on my Patreon channel so that they can then put the tips and techniques that I've shared there into their own portraits. Now you do get the reference photo liner and full material list with this tutorial as well and Patreon members are more than welcome to draw along to this chocolate Labrador if they wanted to. 
but I do want to try and focus on the pet portrait side of things to try and help Patreon members out as much as I can. And the one thing that I would always recommend is if you are working with a fur type like this where the colour can change so quickly, is it's always worthwhile to ask for maybe three to five photographs of that pet. Now the reason I say that is the photos I chose or I had a selection of photos of this chocolate Labrador, her colouring was different in every single one. Now there are a few things that could change the colour of that fur in the reference photo. Whether or not that photograph was taken on a sunny or overcast day, both of those things are going to dramatically affect the colour of the fur. So if you're working from a photograph that was taken on a sunnier day, you're more likely to have more of a reddish colour within that chocolate fur. However, if the photograph was taken on an overcast day, you're more likely to have some more of those cooler purple colours within the brown. So these two things here are going to make a real difference to the sort of colour palette that you're going to have to use in the portrait. Now one thing that I would avoid usually is working from a reference photo where a flash was used, especially if that was taken inside, because that there is, doesn't have natural lighting, you're forcing the light source with the use of a flash, and then you can often get overexposed areas on the fur, create potentially too much shine. You can also then get some red eye within the eyes of the dog as well. So usually, reference photos that are taken outside with natural light is the way to go. Now when it came to working on the body, this is the case with any breed. I really want to make sure that I'm studying the fur length, fur thickness and fur direction and how it changes in relation to the face. So let's say we've got a German Shepherd on the easel. The fur on the face is going to be significantly shorter to the fur on the chest. Now the Labrador here, although it's not as extreme as that because the fur on the chest and body isn't as long as a German Shepherd, it does still have a longer um, fur texture than that on the face. So this here is something that I really do pay attention to. The only time that that's not going to be as obvious is if you're working on a breed such as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier because they are a dog type where the fur texture is pretty much the same all over. So it really does depend on what sort of dog that we're drawing. But again, the layering process here is really important. I'm working here from dark to light. I'm reinforcing my shadows and my highlights, making sure that each of those is positioned correctly. Now, just like with the features on the face, if I change the placement of the shadows and highlights on the body, I could then adjust the shape of the shoulder blade, for instance. And this is one of the areas where I'm currently working on now. As I start to come down to the lower corner, this is typically where the shoulder would be and then that front leg would attach to the body. If I don't get my fur direction correct here, I'm not going to make it look like that. And although you can't see the leg in this reference photo that I used, you can certainly still want to indicate that that's where it would be attached to the body. And the one thing to be aware of when you work on the lower section of a portrait like this is don't rush these sections. It's quite easy to subconsciously think, oh, we're not working on the face, I've done that, so this part isn't as important. But that really isn't the case, that would really affect the finished portrait. So make sure that you give every part of that portrait the time that it needs. Now I mentioned a couple of minutes ago that I'm trying to add a nice variety of all different domestic pets to my Patreon channel. So if there is a specific animal, maybe a specific dog breed that you would like to see featured in a tutorial, then do let me know in the comments below and I'll get it added of my list of tutorials to create. So now I've got one of the darkest parts of the chest fur in, you can really see how it's helping to bring the face forward. Because I've got the highlights on the nose, her teeth and the mouth area contain some nice bright highlights, that's helping to bring that part of her face forward. This is all helping to build up that three-dimensional feel of the portrait. It's not the colour that achieves this, it's the values and contrasts. So the darks are really nice and dark and your highlights are nice and bright. So I really do hope that this tutorial has been useful. If you are interested in drawing along to the real-time tutorial, then that is available now on my Patreon, which is linked in the description below. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help if I can. And if this video was useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. 
I upload two to three videos here to YouTube every week so if you would like to get notified of that content then hit the subscribe and the bell button. And here is a photo of Coco's finished portrait and I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube at the end of the week. As always thank you so much for watching.